This is Chingo Chats, ladies and gentlemen. We're coming in nice and uh, warmed up. I just hit the bar right now, and I'm talking about the, f- the pull-up bar. Sassy, sassy, sass. Uh, I am your host, Chingo Bling. We are not talking any politics today. We have uh, producer Rob in the building. How's it going, everybody? I wear the wrong shirt for this episode. <laughs> it's all good, man. <laughs> it's joking. all good. I'm not offended. <laughs> I won't try to cancel you. No, but um, the person pumping gas next to me this morning was. Really? What'd they say? They just looked at me like this. Literally, they're, they're like... I was pumping um, gas. looked at me like, "Yeah, I wonder how they see it. They, pr- I don't, I don't think they think he's doing a good job or he's alert." We'll talk about that on RP too. Or awake, yeah. But um, yeah, man, uh, what you been up to, brother? Uh, smoking a lot of meat. Oh, I thought you was gonna say something else. No, 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 sir. Well, what you been cooking up? Uh, I'm actually gonna start bringing some stuff. I put it in the Discord. I like how you've been interacting in our Discord. So uh-huh, if you join the Patreon.com forward slash Red Pill, the mileage you get access to that Discord chat, which is popping off. I think. Uh, 40 or so of our 200 and something patrons are in there. So that's cool. The, the memes are flowing. The conversation's flowing. And I posted that I got a, a Pit Boss pellet grill. People were like, oh, cool, you know, sending me some ideas, sending me some, you know, pictures and stuff. And uh, we got a lot of chicken. We, we literally smoked and grilled for about seven hours on Saturday. Just meat, that's, that's, you know, glaze this and salsa, sal- you know, spice that. Trying and, all kinds of shit. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to start bringing stuff and have you judge it on the show. <clears throat> well, for one... Uh, Rob eating good all the time because his wife is a chef. She's been on what was that show? Chopped Master Chef. See, she went past Chopped. <laughs> yeah, she went straight to Master Chef. Tighten that, yeah, tighten that thing at the top. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah no, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just in a vibe right now. I like it. Hit the weed on empty stomach. I'm talking about we still faster right now. This is a fasted episode. Okay. But anyway, um, we we purchased some uh, some of the what do you call that meal prep? Yeah, healthy meal prep. They have all the protein, the carb, the fat, the total calories. The the chicken was moist. You didn't have to hit it with no barbecue sauce. Did yet. you try it? Hell yeah. Oh, okay. I'm tr- I'm trying not to eat up all the trays. Okay. I'm telling my wife like, hey, so um, uh, can I have some of these too? Oh, or dude. Is this personal stash. That is her personal stash, but I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be bringing some. Actually, gonna... she was like, uh, pff, of course, babe. Uh, it's you know for both of us. And I'm like, hmm. She said that reluctantly for sure. Yeah, she said it like Jen Saki. Who, by the way, has COVID. But we'll talk about that on the next episode. <laughs> Fully jabbed, uh, Jen Psaki. Jabbed and boosted. This is a show within a show. It is. <laughs> so so it's, it's interesting how, like, um, like I, I know me lately, I've been thinking to myself, like, yo, you got to re- really learn how to grill and just, it's a really cool art form. Uh, I'm sure it's very meditative yeah. and relaxing. Um, Especially when you have a nice patio, like a patio or a backyard, you know, or, or any kind of space to, like, that call your space. Like, that's my... My little tranquil grilling space. So I think you'll enjoy it once you get into it. I immediately, like, we found this deal. Like, by the way, um, if you guys are looking for one, because they're, they're popular. I think Rogan really made pellet grills popular. Uh-huh. He's got a Traeger. He always posts his, like, elk with his jalapenos and whatever he cooks with his... You ever notice they're all gold utensils, too, by the way? He's got, like, gold forks and oh, knives no, and I shit. Oh, no, I didn't know that. Yeah, fucking kingpin over here. But... Uh-huh. um. If you go to Tractor Supply, good old TSC, if you have a Tractor Supply around you, which I don't think there's one around you particularly out here, but in the outskirts there is, Pit Boss, which is like the second place runner-up, kind of like a like Arcticus to Yeti kind of thing. They have a lot of good, a uh, lot of equipment, and Tractor Supply has an exclusive Pit Boss pit, which is literally the only difference is, if you're wondering, if you're researching this, because we took us forever to find out, it's like a color difference. Instead of like bronze and black, it's like green and black. This mm. thing is 746 square inches of just grilling space, mm-hmm. and it's a smoker for $349. Now, just to give you context, most of those motherfuckers on Amazon right now are almost double the price. But is it made in America, though? Pit Boss, I believe, is made in America, I want to say, but I got to look it up to confirm. America first right here, baby. Yeah. And they had seven-day-a-week uh, customer service in English. and very. Hello. Boy, you sounded real mad over there. <laughs> Seven day a week in English. It's not like you about to say they're not offshoring our jobs. They, they are not offshoring these jobs. We called them on Saturday. They, they answered a question over the phone, not even live chat, over the phone. And then on Sunday, we called again to register for a five year warranty. And we got to fucking grill and Yeah, I think these days, man, having like actual human, human customer service, I don't want to sound tr- uh, transhumanist uh, phobic, you know, robot phobic or AI phobic, nothing like that. Because technically a Traeger grill, that it's like merging technology with like ancient mm-hmm. caveman type shit. Yeah, you got like the meat probe that you like, you know, if, you're, if you've ever grilled, like you got to like constantly check the temperature of the meat, move it around or whatever. They have so like like upscale versions of these things where they have like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth where you can see like all that shit from your phone, from an app. 
we have kind of like a mid basic one where you just got a meat probe. You put that bitch in there. It tells you the temperature on the outside of the grill, like digitally. You set it to like whatever temperature <laughs> with a little a switch. You close it and you walk away and you kind of check it every once in a while. But other than that, it's like the easiest way to like get into yeah. grilling some good. I don't know if Gabe, you know, people like that that are real pit masters that yeah. go out there and purist, purist. Yeah, I don't know if they appreciate them, but you know, it's a good beginner thing. Yeah, that's like like purist and hip hop, like backpack, yeah. boom bap. You know, what's your bars talking about, son? What are your bars talking about? Huh? You get, when are you get in the studio next? Actually, uh, Thursday, right when I fly in back from Irvine. That's, that's mm. Right when I land from Irvine, going straight to Steve O's. Which, by the way, uh, tonight, <laughs> this drops on, actually, this drop on um, Thank you, Thursday. Irvine. Thank you, Irvine, yeah, for a sold-out show. Thanks for a sold-out show. Um, Silent Meme Jordy, who's been helping out doing tour posters, will be in the, in the audience. Oh, nice, man. No pressure. Yeah. Um, and, and a couple of people from the Patreon I've seen, and a bunch of people from Instagram. I retweeted a bunch of his shit, boy. Yeah. This morning. It's funny as hell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, uh, Very what you, funny. What are you working on in the studio? Can you say, or is it a top secret? Uh, I'll let y'all know, man. Um, uh, you know the Freedom song? Yeah. Let me tell you this story, man. So I was at Michael Berry's house. We we're trying to watch the Astros. <sighs> He's like, man, uh, go get cut. his homeboy was there. They play um, pickleball. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, they really into it. They're like, you need to come. So I'm going to go peep it out. And then I'm going to be like, can I bring my homeboy, Rob? Fuck yeah, we'll play duos. We'll kill him. I don't know, man. They said Michael Berry. They're like, bro, he's better at this shit than radio and everything else. That's how they were like, damn. But uh, so we're watching Astros, right? Eating steak. And uh, his homeboy, he's like, Chingo, let me get you some wine. I was like, man, what kind of wine is this? I asked the homeboy, right? And he like stops and like looks over at Michael, like, nah, he ain't gonna get mad. Uh, it's, man, I found some good shit, some uh, super <laughs> aged in bourbon barrels, some rare shit, one of one. one. And um, anyway, long story short, we're trying to watch the Astros, and Michael Berry's like, Alexa, play Chingo Blaine. Freedom comes on. Freedom. He's like, bro, why you never so show me this, man? He's like, man, he should have been. He's like, that message is in tune with like, he's like, maybe rewrite the first verse, you know. Uh, throw a little Let's Go Brandon on there. A little yeah, less or a, more? A little more. Oh, okay. Let's Go Brandon. Less Coletto, more Brandon? <laughs> yeah, more Cabo. <laughs> nah, he was like, man, there's got to be a part that just switches over into like a different genre, like some Spanish, like Latin type shit. But anyway, he was like, yo this song right here he's like who did the production he's like is that you on there he's like oh my god so he's like revamp it a little bit rename it he's like maybe let me do an introduction on it he's like all this talk radio would love to play it all this, really yeah uh-huh he's like hundreds of stations is that why you went on a meditative walk or what nah oh, okay nah man i just got out that traffic bro oh my goodness <laughs> gracious is that so, what we, it was? so we have a three-month-old we got a three-year-old mm-hmm. so the three 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 month old she might still want to be up or she might want to wake up at 1 a.m or something so now it's 1 a.m you're thinking man i still got to get up like at 6 45 type of thing and now the three-year-old barges in like at 5 a.m they're like damn i gotta be up at 6 40. it's like it's damn near time for me to get up you drink a whole bunch of coffee and you're just trying to wake up then you're in that fucking houston traffic bro <laughs> I was like, it's 2021. When is the AI going to hurry up, take over? Pretty soon with the metaverse. Just plug us into the metaverse. Let's just transcend this species already. You know, I was like, they got to hurt and dig holes in the ground or flying cars or, or, or fuck it. We just doing Zoom school from now on. Fuck it. I'm going to just contradict myself. They say Zoom school is actually better for everyone. What if on RPT it's all about like in person, go to the school board meetings, you know, take them out of uh, public school, put them in a private school with one-on-one teaching with smaller classes. And then on Chingo Chats, it's like, put them in Zoom, yeah. put them in front of the one screen. One second, I'm like, you know, homeschooling is a sacrifice worthy <laughs> of looking into. And then over here, I'm like, hey, bro, when Elon Musk going to hurry up and move us to Mars already? <laughs> I'm assuming you had to drive across town and to drop off the 13-year-old. Yeah. And then... By, and then it was smooth sailing on the way there. It's the way back, bro. Yeah. Coming back into downtown. So if they just collapse the electrical grid, it's like, why you want to be right in the heart of a city, bro? <laughs> if we get cyber hacked. 
I yeah, I knew you had to have been doing something to trigger that thought when you sent me that Candace Owens video this morning because I was working on this morning's show notes for RPT and I was like, why is he sending me something so deep so early in the morning? You ever thought about the electrical grid, everybody? I'm yeah. Like, what? Six thirty. Yeah. No. Nah, what it is, bro, is like I said. You here's what you got to hack. Check this out. You really got to hack your morning routine because. You know, fuck, different routine. My 13-year-old's here. Fuck, I got to get up. I can't just sleep in to eight or something. Or, or wait till the, um, the three-year-old and the three-month-old start kicking you in the face. <sighs> so you really got to stay on top of your morning routine because it's like, well, you normally have breakfast at this, at this time, but not today. You know what I'm saying? Normally, you at the gym right now. You know what I'm saying? Or normally, you would have hit the gym already or whatever. Just, just different little things where it's like, okay. How do you not hop on Candace Owens' page at 6.30 in the morning? Like, okay, you're supposed to be doing something else. What are we doing? Kettlebell swings? You know what I'm saying? What are we doing? Are we praying? Are we reading? The- Actually, you know what? Here's what happened. I got up. I went over to the rocking chair. In the- I know I sound old. I went over to the rocking chair in the corner by the window. It's a nice corner. Usually, no, man. There's kid well. toys all around it and spills. So usually there's a Bible and like a book. I already finished Mike Lindell. Usually it's like the stoicism one or just stuff like that. So I'll try to get a couple pages of Proverbs in or something. Well, I I moved it because I felt like I was being inconsiderate. Like, uh, man, I got too much of my stuff Mm. over here and I'm just kind of creating more mess. So I'm like, you know what? Let me go put it over there in the desk. And so I didn't see it there and boom, my whole little thing got hijacked. So next thing you know, I'm like, okay, next thing you know, I'm, I, I don't know. I, for some reason, you just go into fucking um, autopilot. Maybe you you uh, rationalize it subconsciously. You know, the brain is an interesting thing. Subconsciously, you rationalize it like, oh, let me go see the amount of comments where I mentioned Irvine or Houston this weekend or something like that. You know, one of those catch-22, like, let me obsess over that aspect. Hmm. And now you opening up Facebook, you, boom, you got Instagram open. Oh, shit, now you outraged and shit, like... <laughs> You know what? Yeah, the World Economic Forum. What the fuck, Klaus Schwab and this Build Back Better bullshit? You know what I'm saying? Klaus Schwab. Yeah, Klaus Schwab. And I start thinking about this uh, global climate meeting they're having. I'm like, wait a minute. Trump, the only one that figured out, hey, man, we still got to be free. If we start joining too much of y'all's little global New World clubs, y'all going to turn us in, into y'all. We got to now acclimate to y'all's system of, of living. And we America, bitch. Anyway, I, I uh, let's kind of go down. Yeah, go back. No, 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 no. You don't want to go down this. I kind of want to go down this rabbit hole a little bit just to kind of see where your mind is right now after uh, some some morning meditation and some uh, morning Mother Earth. Yeah, I did pull ups, push ups, walked, push-ups, walked. You know, go ahead. Got the blood oxygenated. You know, got Hit it pumping in there. Mm-hmm, go ahead. What to me? Because this will go to went to one of the questions on RPT that uh, people submitted on um, or fans submitted on Patreon. Where do you think this is all going? Because personally, let me just summarize it real quick with like, I don't think there's enough people in the United States, not just the world, but in the U.S. to allow us to fall into this like, I know we're going in the trajectory of like tyrannical kind of economic forum, maybe potential like somewhat socialist communist kind of direction, but I don't think there's enough people that would actually let that happen in the United States. Well, okay, go on. I feel like the uprising has, has started already as far as like, okay, we really hated the orange man, and we still do, but we also hate this old dumb guy that's shitting his pants, hashtag poopy pants Biden, and they're just like, okay, I'm going to prove to you guys that I can be a little bipartisan here. Let's see how this West Virginia, or this uh, Virginia governorship gubernatorial race goes. Let's see, you know, what these people are talking about over here, and then slowly I feel like we're going to get to a place where it's going the other direction. Well, here's the scary thing. As many um, independents and moderate Democrats, for example, the Virginia race, that's part of what had me crunk this morning. I'm like, man, let me go to Twitter, see who won this thing. Don't tell me yet. I want to know on RPT. What's tomorrow? But real quick. Okay, bet. So let me just explain what I'm trying to say. So you're basically saying too many motherfuckers are willing to go up to a school board or protest or even worst case scenario, they can defend their own home with, you know, with their uh, constitution protected, you know, Second Amendment rights and, uh, you know, things like that. This is how I see it, though. It's a different type of warfare where it's like, yeah, y'all can have guns. We, we ain't really ain't tripping over the guns, bro. Good luck trying to say something on social media. Um, good luck uh, fighting this, these passports, which are going to have a social credit score linked to them. Good luck fighting surveillance. Good luck fi- fighting 
artificial intelligence technology and the amount of power these oligarchs and the the elitists and the globalists have so in other words y'all can go fuss and fight at the school board y'all can go take it to the voting poll but at the end of the day we done found all the loopholes we know how to you know shut down dissent we know how to falsify a whole narrative we can we could paint you a domestic terrorist right now you know what i'm saying we could literally take over your educational system right now so it's one of those things where it's like is it a hundred year war how many more years of this public schooling of of a uh, marx's divisive uh victim mentality and the critical race theory and covering up the rapes from the trans kids and so on and so forth or, or what have you any type of incident any type of crime they covered up because of the um the school to prison pipeline once that shit became a talking point they're like oh we got to keep our numbers down so there's a law where the schools have the right to not report incidents. That's why they didn't even tell the parents, bro, when the little girl got raped in Virginia. Right. Anyway, that's how I see it. I guess it's uh, a little bit pessimistic, but I want to be optimistic. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be optimistic. I, I... So that's what kind of got you going this morning, too. That's funny. Um, I agree, man. I try to, you know, we always try to paint this or find the silver lining in all this. If I had slept an extra hour. Just an extra hour? That's all you needed? Probably, yeah. You didn't, Easily. You didn't get the... Chingo Bling didn't get the extra it wasn't, hour that he needed? It wasn't a desvelada, bad. It wasn't... It's not one of those nights where it's like, bro, we had a sick baby. We were literally up all night. Like, we didn't sleep. It wasn't one of those. It yeah. was like, I still took my ZMAs, thank God. I still kind of went to bed at a decent time, except you had these little, you know, puppy interruptions. Hmm. Uh, and then you got to get up, and now you're making hash browns and shit. You and that... Can you fry them extra, uh, uh, extra, Dad? I like them crispy. Uh, God damn it. Uh, can I have toast with that, please? Uh, I got to get the toaster. It's over here. We, we need a bigger house. What, what, why are these cabinets like this? Look at this bullshit. Why is the Teflon? Who did this to this Teflon? What, hey, what kind of spatula y'all been using on my God? This wok don't look at why is there a wok? We're not even Asian. The, the handle's all loose on the damn wok. They sissifying, uh, you know, you know, just going through the whole thing, like becoming outraged and shit. Like, it's you know, it's Big Ed. You got Big Pharma now. You got Big Ed now. Big education. Big Ed. It's Big Ed. Hey, let's take a shift into another fun direction real quick. We'll bring this back uh, around RPT time. But I want to talk about TV. Um, I want to talk about TV shows. I want to talk about late night shows. I want to talk about Chris Stefano bombing on Wendy Williams. Did you see this clip? No, man. Don't tell me that. No, in a great way. So I caught wind. So Whitney. Cummings substituted or whatever filled in for Whitney uh what's her name Whitney Williams okay as far as I know I think she's in some kind of mental rehab place Whitney Williams or something mm. which I feel like Whitney Cummings will probably be there one day too but uh <laughs> from what I heard from from the pig Tim Dillon it was a the whole week was just a disaster she invited Tim Tim's like I'm not that's not that's not my audience I'm not going on the Wendy Williams show right so I don't know who else was on there during the week but Chrissy D which will he'll be in Houston in December and I want to go see he he posted the clip that his uh, somebody edited for him, right? Dude. I have a man on this panel. This is the worst idea ever <laughs> because I am going to say anything I say, the audience is going to hate me. And I'm only saying this because I've been like every size. I've been everybody's size. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you're beautiful, Michelle. Just the way you are is what I'd like to say to the audience. By the way. I also love fat people. I love and I love I'm getting fat now. I put on about 25 pounds. I got a nice, puffy, fat face again. I'm going to be one of those guys like there's no way I'm going to have two feet when I'm 50. You know? I'm going to get one cut off. Oh. Ten years into comedy, I was like, my knees hurt from tap dancing. Take the tap shoes bag. I want to sit down, relax. You call it stand-up comedy, I'm going to sit down and do comedy. Ooh, no. I'm tired, y'all. Stop asking us to do stuff, okay? Also, comedy, like... His knees hurt, too, but... <laughs> this is a Shane Gillis well, situation. <laughs> You want to come to my so. show instead? Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Let's clap it up. That's all it is. It's just clapping at points. I don't know why you guys would have a man on this. No, this is not bombing. No, it's not. It's fucking gold. No, is what this it is. is not bombing. Chris, reframe it. He I, I mean, I think he's, he's genius enough to where he's setting you up to recognize that it was really well done. It was really well done. Well, it was really well done for the internet, as people are saying. This was not well done for TV. This was a total bomb for However, TV. However, I'd argue that this is like, it could be like, man, I might be high, yeah. but I'll go ahead and make a prediction. Let's, let's do it. 
this this contrast and juxtaposition of like truth and reality in front of this manufactured, um, very clinical style of doing things, I think it could create like a little tectonic. A little, ri- a little crack in the in that pavement. A little shift where maybe some younger producers get in a TV game and they start saying, "Look, y'all, people don't want this canned laughter, audience light." He literally told y'all to y'all's face. It's just clapping it up and points, and we're not gonna sit here and talk shit and roast and be funny. I think that's groundbreaking, if you ask me. Dude, I thought it was so funny. Uh, let's walk through this one and we'll get back to this kind of day TV show shit. Is that plan? Where'd you go? It's just funny, you know. Funny is the, is the is the world that I live in. You're funny. I'm interested. You're not funny. I'm not interested. Okay. And and I have no interest in gender or race or anything like that. But everyone else is kind of with their little calculating. Is this the exact right mix? You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I think that's uh, to me it's anti comedy. It's okay. anti-comedy. It's it's more about you know PC nonsense okay. than are you making us laugh or not? Right, right. Okay. Okay. Check this out. Remember when Nas said hip hop is dead? Mm-hmm. At the time, I didn't understand what he was saying. I felt like he was hating on the south. Jerry, Jerry Seinfeld, and the old school like Norm Macdonald. Um, it's a dying breed. He's calling out how, like, y'all obsessed with this identity politics and trying to get these points and talking points. And he's like, it's against humor. It goes against everything. It's like oil and water, bro. You, it has to be a, a free society. It has to be, like, open speech. It has to be, like, you got to have some room to talk shit and play. That's what makes us human. That's what makes us laugh. You know, that's what comedy is. But... That lets you know how free you are, man. That's why they they coming after the comedians and they want to like really censor and curate what the fuck. You know, you got these um, people that like to protest and be offended and cancel Dave Chappelle. Um, we'll talk about Kaepernick's show on, on RPT, but um, it kind of plays into that just because I don't know if you saw any of the clips going around. There's like two big clips uh, that have been cut up and are going around and there's one on the What They Said page and there's one that we I don't think you've seen that I, I found this morning, but... Um, you know, I'm watching Seinfeld. So they put it back on Netflix October 1st. And all of October, we've just, if it's not baseball, like if it's not postseason baseball, it's Seinfeld while we're like working on our computers or just kind of chilling on the couch. And last night's episode was the outing one where it's like George and Jerry pretend to be uh, gay. And there was a New York Times reporter behind him at the cafe, at the, at the coffee house, uh, easy dropping on him. And she really thought it was, it was real. And the whole episode, it's like, you know, we're not gay. Not that there's anything wrong with that, right? In that, in that same episode, they're pitching their pilot to NBC, and the president of NBC's daughter comes into the, to his apartment because he's sick and he can't go to the office, and he catches George staring. Uh, his daughter's played by, I think, Brooke Shields, a young Brooke Shields. Beautiful, oh, right? Mm-hmm. But in the episode, I think she was like 15 or she was a teenager, and he catches George looking at her, and he's like, uh, did you get a good look, George? And then he cancels the pilot, and then oh. they get Elaine to dress up, show her tits, and then Russell, the president uh, in the show, sees her. And he, he notices what they're doing is like, oh, line of sight. Okay, so then he picks up the pilot again. They're working on it. But that whole episode, that whole looking at tits, you know, a young teenage high schooler tits, oh, wow. pretending to be or gay and then saying that there's anything wrong. You could not make that today. You know, for everything that Seinfeld is as far as like, you know, uh, observational stuff and kind of like white people humor or whatever, Seinfeld pushed the boundaries on a lot of episodes. I mean, a lot of race stuff, a lot of gender stuff. You just yeah. couldn't do that today. That's back when you had more free speech. <laughs> you had free speech, right? The culture, it's a culture war. For example, I wish somebody would just put Kaepernick on the spot and be like, are you a Marxist? I want to know his opinions on Karl Marx publicly. He would pro- I'm surprised, honestly, he hasn't said that he is. Because of these uh, clips on this show, I didn't even want to look at him. I knew I was going to get disgusted. But I read enough context where it's like, he basically said the, um, the NFL draft or Columbine or some shit like that. Or what is it called? Combine, combine. not Columbine. Yeah. Did you see that, that clip, though? Did no, you- I didn't want to click it, man, because I knew I was going to get mad, dog. So we'll, we'll save it for RPT then. You, do you have to? I, I- yeah, we'll watch it on the show. Okay. We can get an honest reaction. But... Just come out and say you're a Marxist, bro. Just just say it and just say like why you believe it. Um, we'll let you express yourself. But you gotta come out and say it. Because we need to know what kind of like uh, filter you view in the world, view in America, and why you keep coincidentally, you don't say nothing about the Uyghurs, but you getting that Nike check 
you know, you got white, but don't he got white parents? Yeah, his adopted parents are white. You grew up white. Like and, a, a, so you hate yourself. It, yeah, obviously hate themselves. I mean, look at the shit that he spews out of his mouth. But half of the, not half, I think it's like a quarter or a fourth of the NFL is white as well. It just sounds very like anti-American, anti-white. It sounds pretty fucking racist if you ask me. And I, I just feel bad because he probably truly believes in his heart. It's like the, um, it's like the benevol- benevolent lie. Mm. Like he probably was really persuaded to believe that like communism and socialism and Marxism and, and uh, you know, critical theory type shit, critical sex theory. That's a new one. Well, you talk about this all the time and I know maybe some of it comes from uh, Scott Adams, but when people are, I mean, you can be brainwashed, right? That's, that's for sure. That's well, 100%. his girlfriend is like a little fucking social, you know, Marxist or whatever, a little I don't keep activist. Up. I, don't but know, go on. I don't know. I don't, I don't keep up with who she is. I, I've seen her maybe once or twice. She's like a leftist activist. So, you know, uh, Scott Adams talk about, uh, what, what, what's the main thing? It's like a persuasion, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and, mm-hmm. and almost like in a, in a sense, like hypnotizing these people of these ideas. And Marisol yesterday made a point on, on her lounge that I don't know how it came up because we don't talk a lot of politics on there, but every once in a while she'll be dropping these little red, red uh, little droplings. Pink pills. Little pink pills. Yeah, pink pill tamales over there. Yeah. <laughs> and um, she was saying that, man, I can't believe, like she was reflecting on recently, how she was so easily or or for whatever reason convinced of talking points from The View or talking oh, yeah, points yeah, from yeah. like Good Morning America. Because you're in a news silo. You only hear one side. Yeah, and she was she was genuinely like flabbergasted at how it was just like, from one day to another, she's like, oh, shit, I'm, I'm out of this trance. Like, what's Cognitive going on? Cognitive dissonance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people, Kaepernick being one of them for probably many reasons. Like, you go from being, on average, that guy was making $19 million, I think, per year on his NFL contract from 11, 20, 2011 to, like, 2016 or 15. And, uh, and then this is what he's doing now. It's like, what happened, you know? Again, man, look, look into his girlfriend. She's like a little activist. But, um, well, let's look at what happened, all right? Hypothetically, I, 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 I didn't, uh, I'm not him. I don't know what social worker, what teachers, what college professors, what friends, what, I mean, the culture war, it's all around you. So it's what advertisement, what athlete said a thing, you know, what rapper said a thing, you know what I'm saying? Um, people get persuaded by these concepts like defund the police and abolish ICE and, you know, uh, no human is illegal or like open up everything. You know, this is America. Yeah. Or, hey, censorship is good. I don't like George Lopez. He retweeted, um, uh, I think it was a uh, Sasha Bowen, Cohen, Corin, whatever the fuck <laughs> that motherfucker. Bear Cohen. It's like, you ain't even from America, dog. Hey, where you from? Man, say, hey, check it out, big doc. Hey, when a motherfucker come to you with his hands already up here, like, hey, 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 respect the homie. Hey, check this out, homie. Hey, does this bus right here? Moncos got on. <laughs> Where you from, eh, see? After you done caught, you in an eight by three jazz. <laughs> yeah, kind of like the chick on the subway. Did you see that video? Bro, I don't even want to click that type <laughs> of shit, bro. You didn't see it? <sighs> what was it? Some crazy motherfucker like beat the shit out of a girl? Well, there was a, it was a black guy on the train and yeah, this lady told him to take a chill pill. And he said, tell me to take a chill pill again. She's like, take oh. a chill pill. Boom. Oh, <laughs> and her head goes and it hits the, you know, the fucking bars you grab on the subway. And nobody did anything about it. But again, that's something we'll talk about on RPT. Why does this show always, it's two shows. It's like three shows within the show sometimes. It's a good ass show because we'd be going down these hypotheticals and shit where it's like, ooh, what would you do? That's true. Everybody listening. Imagine if like society went so pussified where even the women would already fucking give you that look, Rob. Hey, bearded guy, we're about to fucking move on this guy. <laughs> that's some Chicago slang. That old shit. Did, uh, did you move on him? I think that's how they would say it. Did you move it, on him? It's them? because in Chicago, man, John Gotti, like that mob shit, that mafia shit, and then all the gangs, that shit is entrenched. But anyway, they'd give you that glance on the subway. Hey, you with the Astro, what you got on Astro? Hey, yeah. you with the Astros cap, you know. You fucking go for the hips and the knee, like wrap around this mm-hmm. motherfucker. I'm about to go for his neck. I'm, I'm going to get behind him. I'm going to take his back. And he finna go night, night type shit. Yeah. Because in a non sissified society, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're cushy. This is America. We're so free, man. We don't all learn. We don't all know jujitsu. I don't, I'm not, I went to three classes, but I love bringing up jujitsu. Yeah. I watch a whole bunch of YouTube boxing, but that's the extent. You know, I hit I hit pads a couple times one time. I hit a heavy bag a couple times. But like 
if the lady looked at me on the subway, I'd be like, man, look here, lady. It's mental health. It's a lot of mental health right now. It ain't worth it. This is my next stop right here. And fuck it. She'd have just had to eat them jabs. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody sent me the video and I sent it to she, you. Hey, she shouldn't have talked back, bro. You shouldn't have been talking shit. He told you don't tell me take a chill pill again. Or like Tim Tillman would say, she should have kept her mouth shut. <laughs> yeah. Um, somebody sent me the clip of on Halloween night. It was Javante Davis with the uppercut. And it was like a year. I forgot it was already a year ago. We just talked about it. So mm -hmm. I just replied back. Hashtag Chingo Chaz. He's like, yeah, I'm just catching up on Chingo Chaz. I was like, cool, man. Oh, so he went to go peep it? Yeah, he was oh, catching wow. up on Chingo Chaz and got to that point where we were talking about your boxing obsession in that in that particular fight with Javante Davis. We watched some boxing last night, but but go on and finish. What no, no, no. That, that's just cool. Like th This shit's starting to happen. Like The Chingo verse, as we, as we call it now, through the newsletter, which sign up at ChingoBling.com. It's starting to ripple despite your shadow ban, which continues on Instagram. Facebook, not so much. I'm seeing or it's starting to change a little bit, but it's getting out there into the ether. You know, those chats, this chat that we're doing right now is very not political. We talk about a lot of different things. So to, to, so to get stuff from like Gavin Newsom and, you know, New York to like the boxing and the fucking shit we're talking about, you know, sleep schedules and stuff like it's cool. It's all the, it's boiling up. You know what I'm gonna have to do, bro? What? I'm gonna have to um, drop some freestyles, probably drop a little mixtape skits. Get back to recording like that. And, you know, shout out to Thea. Shout out RPT. And just look at it like it's just promotion. And hopefully members of the Thea, everybody listening, all the patrons, everybody listening, you know, I'll, I'll do my best to make this shirt as tight. If you like it, mm -hmm. maybe put it on your story a little something. It'll erase in 24 hours. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you know a homeboy that's a Chingo fan, maybe, you know, hey, your boy drop some shit. Text him a little link. That way we could work around the shadow ban. So my job is to be so outside the box and imaginative and fucking just snap, you know, um, on everything we do, brother. Yeah. Podcast, just everything, all the merch designs, everything got to just cut through the noise, be all signal, no noise, to where people are like, bro, I fucks with this shit. I'm about to go stream it. I'm about to go buy it. Like, I'm going to share the link. This is really well done. You know, I fucks with it. Did whatever. you say all signal, no noise? Yes. That's a good phrase. Well, it comes from uh, Steve Bannon and War Room Pandemic because it always goes back. Never thought that's it always goes back to <laughs> politics. It, yeah, he'll be like, it's all signal. No noise. Like we're gonna cut it to you straight. Interesting. But uh, but yeah, so that we can so that we can hyper beam past the little firewall. Yeah. You know. Yeah, because who knows what's coming with the metaverse, right? Have you seen the full commercial that he does for the metaverse? I ain't sit there. I mean, hey, I know it's gonna be a very tempting drug where you gonna I mean some motherfuckers gonna be like, man. Motherfuckers gonna get addicted, be like, man, I ain't hopped out yet. Man, I've been on the metaverse all day. I went to work, I made tokens, I interacted with people, I went and went to my friend's uh metaverse page and gave him a little like and shit. And, you know, dropped some stars over at this entertainment. Went to a concert, they'll go watch motherfucking Travis Scott, right? They'll be up in that bitch. That's true. Play the game, you know. I'm gonna I'm gonna I pulled up the metaverse commercial and we'll get back to it in a second. But I just remember the point I was gonna make earlier where when we were talking about, you know, TV and Kaepernick and versus stuff like Seinfeld was doing back when there was more free speech kind of shit. Tripoli always makes a really good point that never in his life has he seen so much bad business take place. Like that he, he, that he always poses or he's been posing this question recently to Callan of like, what is causing these execs and these companies, these corporations to throw good money at bad business? In a sense where... Oh, who, talking about Hollywood, the Hollywood yeah, system? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. Go on. Uh, and... And, you know, they have these conversations that are, you know, pretty nuanced and stuff. And there's really never, obviously, a definitive answer. Like, we don't know what the fuck they're, they're thinking. But it does seem like they're throwing a lot of good money at bad business, at bad ideas, you know, at bad concepts, at bad whatever. But it, it continues to go. And, and Triple is like, I feel like we're entering or, or we're in the middle of this decade of just bad business. Entertainment business, I guess, more so. Do you agree with that? Or how do you see that? I think I heard him say, we might have heard the same episode. Um... I couldn't decipher what he was trying to say. I was like, is he getting conspiratorial? Because I started interpreting it at, is at like, um, oh, are there some parent companies working in the shadows that are more, not so much concerned with profit from this minor thing under the conglomerate umbrella, but more so. Well, just like for instance. But more so the propaganda, real quick. But more so the propaganda is going to benefit our larger other companies better. Well, take like the Hannah Gatsby thing, you know, the whatever, the Netta or whatever that special was at that, that special that comedy special it's not funny Man, but it's, did, did you see it oh yeah uh, the whole thing i got most through most of it okay i gotta watch it uh you know it's being propped up by these these 
who are the reviewers? Rotten Tomatoes and like whoever, you know, this big tech, you know. Uh, fact checkers. Fact checkers. And then when you got, you'd be like, it's funny. They'd be like, no, it ain't. Exactly. You got like <laughs> that as an example, or you have like all of this social justice kind of like uh, TV shows, and it's just like equity everywhere. And he makes this point where it's like, what is it, or it might have been Callum, where it's like, why is it that everyone wants this equity, right? This e- outcome of equity, not equality, right? Not an opportunity of outcome. Because it's communist and it's Marxist. Yeah, but it, money's being thrown at those ideas by big institutions that in turn, if you thought about it, there's ESG no way. ESG and all that. There's no, like what the return in a society like that isn't a profit return. It's a nothing burger. Now, wouldn't you think? Well, you sound real Fox News saying nothing burger. <laughs> Do they really say that? They, CNN, somebody be saying oh, that. Shit. I don't know. <laughs> Joy Reid. Um, How dare you? <laughs> I'm just kidding, bro. <laughs> uh, why? Because I had never heard that term until, until politics. Oh, it's funny. But um, so it would be trippy, right? Hypothetically, if you were to look behind the curtain and see who the wizard is, like the motherfuckers really, really like, is it really George Soros and Klaus Schwab and these people where, where like, wait a minute, is Hollywood really just propaganda? You know what I'm saying? Because they done did that shit before where the people didn't know. They were just like, like North Korea, you think they know this film is propaganda? They don't know until they see some shit from America. Then they're like, oh shit, what the fuck? This is, this is advanced. This is like competition, free market, a little bit of capitalism. You know, good shit from America back in the day when they weren't just rehashing everything. But, check, but, but let, me, let me make this point. You want to no, go, no, go oh, for it. Oh, real quick. All right. So uh, Darren Carter... Comedian Darren Carter, follow him. Uh, He sent me a link of, what's that motherfucker's name? Jamie Kennedy. Yeah. The comedian, right? Jamie Kennedy. Jamie Kennedy does these really good uh, YouTube rants. Like, it looks like a podcast, a nice set and everything. And I'm not too familiar with his comedy. I just recall that, like, my sister would send me links from his, uh, he had a TV show where he would do hidden camera dress up like do um costume type mm-hmm. of shit she's like oh this reminds me of like all your little characters or whatever so anyway he does these rants where he says for example here's what's wrong with the agent agency representation system in hollywood and he really breaks it down like i send a link to a lot of my comedian friends just to show them like look bro this is the pain in the ass people that these comedians mm-hmm. that are living in hollywood and having an agent and dealing with these agencies, like I was this close. Well, I mean, these motherfuckers were har- harassing us, flying into shows, flying into New York, all the way from LA, flying into Phoenix, all the way from LA. That ain't that long of a flight. But still, they start coming to New York even. And, um, you know, we can get you this percentage. And, woo-doo, woo-doo, woo. and you know, we got a literary department. You ever want to put a book out? Uh, we can get you to audition for some of these movies. And, woo-doo, woo. <sighs> But anyway, Jamie Kennedy does a good job of breaking it down. It's like, bro, these people get a flat salary depending on how much work their clients bring in, you know, from let's say they book, they represent the baby or somebody or or George Lopez or somebody. So they're like getting their 10% or whatever and throwing it in the agency coffers. Then they, the the big boss looks at how much you brought in and decides what your bonus is on top of your base salary, your commission. So... My point, the reason I bring it up is this. We can look at the Hollywood game and be like, man, is this fucking George uh, Soros, Klaus Schwab? Is this the World Economic Forum? Is this the globalists trying to kill creativity, kill free expression, uh, persuade us and prime us with these stupid, weird concepts of this dystopian future and they want us to fucking mindfully go into, yes, AI, govern me harder. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Um, Or... Maybe it's a lot, a few factors. Like, well, look, man, things went video on demand, you know, motherfucking. Sure, there's a little bit of uh, a lot of leftist bias in Hollywood with script writers and producers. And it just becomes a system where it's all very lefty and they, they don't feel there's a market for conservative films. You know what I'm saying? They don't they don't want values and traditions. They want they're like, who could we exploit more? Fuck it. Make everything trans, 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 gay, slash, trans, trans, trans. Uh, America's bad, bad racism, race, race, victimhood, victimhood, Marxism, communism, racism. <laughs> Sounds like propaganda. Jeez, yeah, man. I'm trying to find this. Uh, I was listening to somebody talk about Klaus Schwab, Klaus Schwab 
and George Soros and almost like well, you just scared the shit out the algorithm right now. That yeah, Google's right. like they're saying our names. Ah. <laughs> anyway, well, there's like there. I think their their organizations or whatever they are working together on on a, on a business or organization. It's just crazy. Like these two entities, these these crazy like evil villain entities of the fucking you know behind the scenes. They're like, yeah, go ahead. You no, no, go ahead. They're just like, hold on. Klaus, I'm going to call Big Pharma. Hello, Big Pharma, are you up? Hang on. I'm going to I'm going to patch in big education. Ho, ho, hold on. Let's Hey, is media is is media available? Big Talk, Big Tech just logged on to the call. Why and is, they're why all is, on a fucking group call. Why does he sound like Caitlyn Jenner though? Oh yeah, he kind of did sound like <laughs> an old German. I wanted to do like a really old decrepit billionaire like foreign dude, Klaus Schwab, is he German? Hello, good big tech. Okay, now let's go, Kate. <laughs> let's get Ka- Caitlin on the line. Hello, big farmer. This is Caitlin <laughs> on hold for big tech. Now they all collude. Hey, so what are we going to do about these elections? What are we going to do about these populist, nationalist, MAGA people? These crazy America first people and their freedom. Yeah, baby. Who are we going to install into office so that they could be like, Freedom. Oh, <laughs> it's my freedom. Ha ha. Ridicule and freedom. Shout out Kyle Dunnigan. Ridicule and freedom, bro. Uh, I'll have to find it. Maybe we can talk about it on RPT, but it's just like it, this matrix, this world we're living in, this, this, whatever you want to call it, the singularity, something is laughing at us right now. Like it's all just happening and we're just like obviously living in the moment because that's all we can do. And it's just like okay, like you're you're gonna catch glimpses of it, kind of like in that movie that with uh, Roddy Roddy Piper that we, we yeah. played a clip from. And it's just like, and like you said, it's not deep state; it's in your face state. Well, maybe this is a simulation. So let me put it to you this way. Let me put it to you this way. All right, ladies, y'all got to get your coochie game right. What? If y'all think, listen, ladies, if y'all think, if y'all think. Because some ladies got problems with their fellas, man. They be, you know, they be on the pornography too much. You mm. know what I'm saying? So if y'all think that's a problem now. Yeah, that's a good point. Wait till these boys slap that VR in their face. Wait till Mark Zuckerberg get the metaverse with all the sensations and all the touching with a twerking. You know, all the twerk Like you in the metaverse, like, I'm going to drop off tokens at my friend's house. I'm going to go watch a Travis Scott virtual concert. It's like, and I'm going to walk into Pornhub. <laughs> Now they walk up in this metaverse porn hub. Dude, walking in a porn hub? They making it rain, every fantasy, every type of thing behind every fucking door. And they're going to hack your motherfucking brain. And good luck. This motherfucker going to be in the metaverse 24-7. So get your coochie game right. Snap your man out of it. Remind him about that organic coochie. Non-GMO coochie. Imagination. It's about this is what everybody's feeling right now, right? This is what you were trying to, uh, uh, this is partly what you were explaining, in my opinion, which was we're going into the singularity. We're going into this man, billionaires flying to Mars, and they talking about a simulation, and like they, they want us to tap into this metaverse now. And it's like, you never have to leave your house. It's like an avatar is ready player one, and have they been priming us for this? And you will own nothing. You will eat cricket pace, and you'll live in the slums. Meanwhile, while you got that VR thing on your face, they out here in the real world, buying up all the farmland, buying up all the real estate. You're just going to be a renter with that thing slapped to your face, living in the slums like Ready, Play, Ready Player One. So, ladies, rem- I need you to snap your man back into the, the coochie matrix, back into the torta matrix. Snap him back into it. Wake him up. Slap him out of the slumber. Put him back in your simulation, okay? Hit his imagination to where now you're more or- organic and authentic. And all this other shit is like daytime TV. When they walk up in that metaverse porn hub, this virtual reality coochie, sure, they're going to hit their brain. They're going to hit with sensors and they're going to be like, it's like, dude, you can smell the strip club <laughs> in the metaverse. Boy, it smell like strip club in that bitch. You can smell the catfish. It smell like everything in that. Man, you smell like the dirty money, the liquor stains, the old carpet, everything. Everybody's carpet. You know what I'm saying? The DJ hit the blunt. You smell all that shit. In the motherfucking strip club metaverse. Ladies, snap him back into your simulation. Remind, you know, use imagination. You gotta, these, you know what I'm saying? This, these video games getting too good. The virtual getting too good. It's getting too advanced. Remind him about that non-GMO. Well, when you do that, ladies, let, let's just, we can go down another road as well. Once you snap him out of the, you know, the whatever matrix he's in into your coochie reality, 
Get him, get him there, virtual right? Virtual coochie reality. Virtual coochie reality. Take he, him back to the VCR. There you go. What I would then say you could probably do is go ahead and join him in the virtual Pornhub story. You might both have a great time, but you first have to be grounded in reality before you can go into the simulation. Because if you have a loose reality, you're just kind of like one of these uh, NPCs, these non-player characters, and then you try dabbling into the, the metaverse, you're probably going to get stuck in there. You're going to stay in there because you don't have anything going on in reality. So get grounded in reality, and then both of you can enjoy the Pornhub reality store. That's just my opinion. Okay. So, but here's the thing though. Yeah. It's basically man versus machine is human versus machine. So arguably, if you believe, if you believe in God and just the human species and you're not ready to just tr be transhuman, you're not ready to just merge and make technology a God, then arguably if that is God made coochie, you have to, you must be able to compete against the motherfucking virtual. Like, God made that coochie. Ladies, I want you to remember that. Uh, I'm writing this shit down. VCR, before I forget. Yeah, yeah, th yeah. That's a tag. Virtual, hold on. Virtual coochie reality. People going to be like, I remember when he first, uh, when he first took that <laughs> tag from Rob. <laughs> Didn't give him no credit. No he, credit. He ain't said on stage, my boy Rob gave me that tag. Nope. VCR, virtual coochie reality. Um, you know, because it could get into an ethics thing. It gets very black mirror. It's ethics. Honestly, this is an RPT type of combo. Maybe we can have some of it here. But the transhumanism, they talk about it a lot on War Room Pandemic. I've been following different Twitter accounts that, that that's their big thing where they're like trying to warn people like, look, man, there's a dude. I forget his name. He has a weird name, but I think he's the one that wrote Sapiens. He They put him on 60 Minutes, right? Mm -hmm. The propaganda machine. <laughs> yeah. So that he basically, bro, that's a good clip for RPT. He basically hopped on 60 Minutes and said, you know, all this talk about humans having free will and like thinking they really made their own decision with the election or the, the grocery list. He says humans are just animals that are hackable. Mm -hmm. He's like this reality of like basically he was shitting on God. He was basically saying like, go ahead and merge with the technology. And he said it must be regulated in a global way. He said this is bigger than nations. He says nationalism is not good. We need a global system. All these should be trigger words, right? Right. Uh, unless you're on the left and you think Marjorie Taylor Greene is a, hey, orale, she's fucking pendeja, fool. She's racist, dog. Hey, fool, she's, hey, Matt Gates is racist, fool. Oh, DeSantis, dog. Hey, he's killing people, homie. Hey, he's, he's bad for Florida, dog. The, hey, God forbid my state turns into Florida. Meanwhile, Don Lemon's down there enjoying his life. With his, his no mask life. and shit. Punk ass punk. We Somebody should pull up. Yeah. 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 Let's say why we still allowed to say it before it gets misinterpreted. Don Lemon. Punk ass punk. <laughs> he ain't even a punk. He a punk ass punk. Goddamn right. You know what? You just a PAP. Figure it out. <laughs> Because y'all going to censor that. Like, y'all trying to censor Let's Go Brandon. Anyway, somebody should make a compilation clip, silent, silent meme, Jordy, uh, somebody out there. Take all the times Don Lemon talked down on Florida and DeSantis. Oh, just in the last week, you mean? Or in the last fucking Somebody needs a splice of the, uh, Florida, Florida, you know, God forbid, California turns into Florida. Or like, at this pace, New York will turn into Florida. Or Governor DeSantis killing people in Florida. Florida, 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 Florida. Meanwhile, intercut with him and his uh, husband out there, maskless, breathing that good fresh air. Arguably, it was an outdoor space, so I guess they were allowed to be. But it looked hypocritical, man. I'm pretty sure he talked down on Florida and DeSantis. 100%. Meanwhile, I just saw a lady down the street on Alabama walking her dog with a mask on. You know, I was just like, oh, my God. You know, and I feel bad. I, don't, I honestly don't even want to make fun of the person. I just, like, feel bad that they're that, like, mentally traumatized that they can't walk their dog and pick up shit with a bag without having a mask on, which maybe she wore for the shit. Yeah, probably right. not, right? So let's go back real quick to the, to the transhumanism and, and everything you were talking about. I've, somebody I've heard made a really good point that humans are... We're still the same animal, the same, you know, the, the species that came up with sticks and, you know, hunting, gathering, and even before that, like a primate, right? What, what, what primate is it that, uh, like, in order to, to attract 
the opposite sex they um they like present themselves they like show their assholes or whatever they you know what i'm saying like whatever primate that is or whatever animal that is somebody please correct me in the patreon or discord well all animals do different <clears throat> shit you're you know? right but when it comes to to humans the way that you know arguably we've evolved we're still doing that now except we're doing it through snapchat and tiktok and all this shit where you're still doing girls these days are still doing the exact same things they were doing thousands of years ago except you're doing it provocatively on social media through a screen you know what i'm saying so you said back in the day they used to just you know twerk in a different way yep they used to you know they, they used, used to, to wash dishes like this exactly yeah they, they'd be fucking drying stuff yeah, in the river that's, yep. that's, that's. i saw that shit one time man on instagram i forgot who posted it but it was it looked like three nigerian women yeah grown-ass women i'm assuming nigeria i'm not an expert on the motherfucking kente cloth and all the patterns and shit but they had like these big ollas these big ass ollas right because they were like uh washing uh clothes and shit Boy, each one looked like they had like two boulders, like AI, like like you done already went into the metaverse, bro. This shit looked like like you you could be able to go to the uh, metaverse Pornhub and, and hit up Nigerians washing dishes. Boy, they were like ta 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 ta. It was it was obviously a video where they're like twerking on purpose. Right, right. It wasn't like oh th- these ladies don't know they're being filmed. They're washing dishes while they booty shakes. It was like. Booty work. You thought you was in the metaverse. Booty, booty, booty work. (sighs) Organic. Well, let's let's wrap it up with watching this video and uh, of, of the metaverse and kind of breaking some of it oh, down before man. we get into RPT. But for sure, uh, it'll be a real good segue in RPT. <laughs> yeah, we have uh, the the goal, everybody. So we didn't mention this at the beginning of the show, but we did mention it last week where you want to do music, you want to try to release a single every month. You know, in 2022, we want to do more videos. After this, Chingo and I are actually going to try to record some videos and get on a schedule. Where we're doing not just podcasts, but we're going to podcast it up two, two 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 or three days a week, and then do videos as well. So with the patrons' help directly on patreon we're gonna produce more content upgrade stuff in the studio yeah we'll be able to expand man like i I bet rob in a perfect world probably need a good team of like (laughs) three assistants minimum he's probably like bro i need a video editor like we should probably have that conversation where you like hypothetically like a motherfucking wish list like look man in a perfect world bro you know let me supervise a team where i have like a video, like content creator motherfucker let me get a video editor man somebody you know what i'm saying back me up on some of this photoshop stuff we got to do you know yeah we were talking about that so and i briefly for like two minutes yesterday about having like vas and tim ferris years ago i remember reading for our workbook and he's like virtual assistants will help you scale you know your business or your operation because you have somebody working on it remotely you don't need somebody right there next to you all the time same thing you could apply for some of this like i could get it to the point where it's like it, it's it's editable enough to where you just have to throw in a color correction or some graphics or some whatever transitions and then everything else is kind of you, you find that new process and system especially if you give them instructions like here's a dropbox folder exactly with my logo yes you know what i'm saying everything's there here's the logo for the show the video is already edited 60 percent. finish the other 40 with like the extra pizzazz please yeah, yeah. that's not my expertise just it just in general but but going so virtual assistants be knowing those kind of t- oh yeah skills. so that's why i thought I, they were just like research book your flights book your hotel it could be that your, your va could be anything like i know virtual assistants that like uh, I, I interviewed one years ago that would be that was a professional organizer so that she would do a video call and she'd walk you through your house and organize your office your closet your room everything she would tell you how to do it what to use what to buy what to you know all these things where to play Place it virtually the, yeah yeah we'll be like okay you got to go to uh bath bath beyond you gotta get these crates yeah these are the things this gives you saves you the most space this is what is ergonomical all these different kind of things and that was her job she was a virtual assistant she had out of new york who had dozens and dozens of clients where she was their virtual organizer but anyway that's why kind of like silent mean jordy might become one of these people where he helps virtually with uh posters or even videos because he makes really good you know clips and like really funny fucking graphics yeah, or he's really good at it so yeah get some rates yeah so um <laughs> Patreon.com forward slash Red yeah. Tamales. The, the goal is being said. The goal is a thousand by the end of the year. The show's been will be on just right out of year, and I feel like we could get there easily. We're like eight hundred or seven hundred shy of that right now. You know what we could do, right? This could be a ballsy thing. Hmm. If we make cut an ad, maybe silent meme majority, like we could have a budget because this idea, if we execute it, cut an ad that we could boost and promo, and it'll basically be like, um, what was it? November 2nd, 2020. Mm-hmm. Mr. They Can't Deport Us All, you know, and you know, basically told the world, like, hey, oh, I'll look at the date of what I posted, like, why I voted for Trump or yeah. something like that. Uh, and I was talking about things like education, the economy, China, things and th- things like that, or whatever we're able to say in the freaking commercial. Sure. And basically say, like, I'm getting real long-winded, but what, visually, it had to be way spicier than that. It had to be, like, 
me cut to, oh shit, we're seeing images of like Afghanistan. You know, I don't know how political you're able to get on these commercials, but like the border, like everything that's going to shit. And here we are at a year anniversary. In other words, use the election year mark as like a year in, are you better off? Uh, I heard a lot of people's feelings. They didn't understand my decision, but I was concerned about some things. I was seeing some things. I was being told some things that I realized weren't true. Some things weren't even being exposed to me or shown to me. We didn't have access to all the information. That's why, you know, I get it. A lot of people thought I was crazy. They called me all these names. I don't even know if you're allowed to put them in the video. <laughs> but my point is, is that. Use the year. So that's a great idea. And that's something we could probably, we'll, we'll write up and, and work on. But, uh... A thousand, like I was saying, a thousand patrons is a goal by the end of the year so that we can enter 2022 with, you're already, get, you're, you're already booking studio time. You already have songs you want to make, aside from this Freedom Project you were talking about, right? Um, we want to upgrade cameras. We want to upgrade the space and just have the things that we can possibly, like all the things we could possibly need to make like the best content, which a lot of the things really just simple, but it's just, just quality of the content too. Everything. Everything to make it expand, run smoother, run better, and we're able to like really like go in. Yeah you know hire more people yeah. shit like that so it takes a village it takes a village but thank you guys so much we're about to record oh, so we're going to talk a little bit about transhumanism yeah. real well, quick well yeah real let's quick. watch the clip let's man. just this bitch is long and i i'm sure it's terrible from what i've the clips i've seen but it's short like if you didn't already think mark zuckerberg was a fucking robot which let me okay go ahead no finish. no go, go ahead while, while i pull it up well check this out bro i told my sold this yesterday okay i told my sold this yesterday a project like Metaverse arguably takes some years and some time to develop, correct? To get it to this form, even, which is probably like a raw, like we're going to look back at this and be like, dude, this is way better than that. Yeah, this is my space. If you're working on the Metaverse for a few years and there's an election coming up and there's two different political parties and Mark Zuckerberg spent hundreds of millions of dollars to help the Democrats win with these uh, ballot, these third party things he invested in, whatever. He spent a lot of money. Perhaps so that if that party wins, they won't break up my monopoly. If they break up my monopoly, I won't be able to do metaverse and it's going to be a big wrench in my fucking plans. I plan on rebranding and changing the pivot, the direction, the trajectory of the company. So maybe that's why he uh, spent so much money on the elections. It is time for us to adopt a new company brand to encompass everything that we do to reflect who we are and what we hope to build, I am proud to announce that starting today, our company is now Meta. Our mission remains the same. It's still about bringing people together. Our apps and their brands, they're not changing either. And we are still the company that designs technology around people. Hey, and welcome to Connect. Today, we're gonna to talk about the metaverse, starting with the most important experience of all, connecting with people. Sorry the picture in picture's not working, guys. OBS is being clunky. So look up the metaverse commercial in case you're curious while we watch Imagine this. Imagine you put on your glasses or headset and you're instantly in your home space. It has parts of your physical home recreated virtually. It has things that are only possible virtually and it has an incredibly inspiring view of whatever you find most beautiful. <laughs> hey, are you coming? Yeah, just gotta find something to wear. Meanwhile, Black Rock, Blackstone buying up everything. Yo, your virtual house will be nice. All right, perfect. <laughs> You'll have nothing, own nothing, and be happy. What's going on? Hi. World Economic Forum. Whoa, we're floating in space? Uh -huh. Who made this place? It's <laughs> awesome. Right? It's from a crater. I met in L.A. Uh, this place is amazing. <laughs> Boz, is that you? Of course it's me. You know I had to be the robot, man. I thought I was supposed to be the robot. <laughs> He's the robot for sure. I knew you were bluffing. <laughs> hey, wait. Where is Naomi? Let's yes, call her. Naomi. <laughs> when is this shit supposed to launch? Next month? Hey, should we deal you in? Hey, You're going to be able to play like this? Late, I mean, all the Oculus stuff is already out there. This is, this is all going to be using Oculus equipment. Does it look better than what you see now in Oculus? That's cool. I haven't used and Oculus in over a year. So this is in VR. This is what? Uh, augmented? This is VR, but it'll, they'll be using augmented reality as well. It's, it's disappearing. This is amazing. 
Hold on. I'll tip the artist and they'll extend it. Wow. Brilliant. Privacy and safety need to be built into the metaverse from day one. Yeah, okay. You'll get to decide when you want to be with other people, when you want to block someone from appearing in your space, or when you want to take a break and teleport to a private bubble to be alone. <laughs> You're going to be able to bring things <laughs> from the physical world into the metaverse. See? Almost any type of media that can be represented digitally, photos, videos, art, music, movies. You plug into that shit, you're gonna be stuck in that shit. Lots of things that are physical Especially if you don't have a grounding in reality, like I was saying earlier. holograms in the future. You won't need a physical TV. It'll just be a $1 hologram from some high school kid halfway across the world. And you'll be able to take your items and project them into the physical world as holograms and augmented reality too. See? One part of this is Horizon Home, which is our early vision for a home space in the metaverse. Horizon Home is the first thing that you'll see when you put on your Quest headset. Today, there are already a bunch of options to choose from, and we are that family oh, and friends parents. This and is gonna be a big that, one. You can keep wearing your favorite. You about to look real Amish when you're like, nah, man. A lot of people I'm not gonna have my three year old. Dude. You about to look real Amish and outdated. Yeah, that adds like 11 minutes long, everybody. So if you wanna go finish watching it, go for it. I just wanna <laughs> kinda show you some of it, get your take on it. <laughs> when Callan saw it, he's like, okay, I've decided I'm a lot more conservative than I thought I was. I don't like any of this, I don't think any of this is good. I used to love, I mean, I still love tech. I'm a tech junkie. I think an aspect of this is cool, but as I've grown now over the last decade from 22 to 32, a lot of this can be problematic. A lot of this is problematic. Yes. When you are living in, a, in an actual reality right now that we are, and you see how many things are fragmented, a lot of things are hanging on by a, by a thread as far as like actual society and actual human it's relationships. It's about to be virtual society. Well, there's not even a real society, though. So it, it, imagine if you can't coexist in reality with real people, with real relationships and real social cues. No, it's going to be curated. You're going to be this uh, obese person. Well, no, they're just going to erase you from the metaverse. If, they're, if they can shadow ban you and keep you from interacting in real yeah, life. Yeah, you'll, yeah. Okay, so in, yeah, so in real life. So I guess in this scenario, go on. Uh, well, in this scenario, you will cease to exist because if more people go into the metaverse and they're playing by the rules, let's say they were playing by the rules in the real world of, of these big tech oligarchs, and you don't, when you come back out, they're going to be in there, and when you go in there, you're not going to be allowed in there. So where do you go? What do you do? You're just going to have to be stuck in real life. By yourself. I don't know. It's, it's, Putting up posters and flyers and shit. Hey, I'm man, not... <laughs> hey, man, you like comedy? Hey, check me out. Check me out. Go to the box here down the street. So you're like, I do virtual comedy. I tap in, and I, I sit in a virtual room. Maybe that could be a, a little play, though. It's it's a wonder I'm not constantly drunk, looking and watching this stuff. Like, Why do you think just... I'd be, man? I'd be like, man, you know what? I need to really stop smoking, man. I'm like... No, double down. Fuck it. I was like, I need to get my cardio up. You know, I can't... You know, sometimes my throat be a little scratchy. VO2 you know, max is overrated. What is, uh, what is that? Like, your capacity? Yeah. Of, I need to check mine. But you usually know if your shit sucks, if you, like, try to do a workout, and you're just... <gasps> Yeah. Oh yeah, for right? sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm, but, but still, you, I hang in there. I hang in there. Okay, you train that shit. You, you you train for it. You once like once you've worked it up to a certain degree. If you don't keep that up, just you like just lose hit, it. Yeah, hit, hit, yeah. Cardio, if you're sprints. Constant, and, yeah, but if you're not doing that all the time, within six weeks, four weeks, you'll lose all that VO2 max capacity. Man, I'm gonna have to find out what the fuck my VO2 max is. But but anyway, that's when they put you on the machine. You got to like haul ass or something. Yeah, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, but blowing into the thing. The oh, ball, really? That's it. Yeah. On a bike while you're exercising. Marisol has a little plastic one they gave her. After you could she... probably do that too, a homemade okay. one. We'll see. <clears throat> but anyway, um, we told my Snow Wonder motherfuckers ain't drunk or high all the time. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So, you know, anyway, the transhumanism conversation, it's going to be a big thing in politics because they're, for one, in the media, they're going to try to already start priming you. That's why Homeboy went on 60 Minutes. I'm a little afraid of like the global regulation part i'm a little afraid of keeping people docile and pacified meanwhile they buying up all the farmland and real estate and you just not owning nothing eating your cricket pace you know what i'm saying you don't own shit you just an obese person with a thing strapped to your face not interacting with people not breathing no fucking air and in this weird curated virtual space where it's like i saw the news today and it's like no you saw these virtual curated government run propaganda where if you're not tapping out and dealing with people 
and you just go like, oh, I identify as conservative. And it goes, uh, what's the Caitlin name? Caitlin all yeah. over again. I identify as progressive liberal. You're going to be in this virtual, virtual world where like everybody, as you walk up, broom, 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 I see your fucking how you vote. I see your pronouns. I see all this shit because that's a setting that the metaverse gave me the option. So now you really polarize. Or you just go to Chumbly.com, buy one of these shirts, and people know exactly how you voted. And you got to worry about it. And you're going to have to buy that virtual skin. Will it be taken off of the uh, the Ooh. skin store? And you can't represent that shit? I do like skins. We're me. going into RPT. So we're going to take a quick break, get a snack, yeah. and uh, come back and record more content. Hope you guys enjoyed it, man. Chime in on the Discord. We got the chat popping off. Patreon.com forward slash Red Pill Tamales. Sass. <laughs>